It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Tennessee Titans, and it comes your way next. We welcome all of you to Nissan Stadium on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it will be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Gordon joined by Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Charles Davis. And CD, these Titans stumbled a bit last year. They were coming off six straight winning seasons, a number one seed in 2021, but they fell to seven and 10 a year ago. A major surprise because it certainly looked like they had the division locked up around midseason. The big key for them, more consistency at the quarterback position, keeping their guy healthy and being able to run the football as impressively as they've done in the past. Meanwhile, for the visiting Seahawks, most of the pundits, yourself included, Charles, gave their draft class high marks. And that comes after a year where they struck gold in the fifth round with Tariq Woolen. And they also struck gold in the offensive line, getting brand new tackles at left and right. Struck gold with a running back who was a big time runner as a rookie. Yeah, there's something to be said about building through the draft. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Nashville. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So a new face at quarterback for the Titans in 2023 is the 24-year-old rookie out of Kentucky, Charles, Will Levis. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And with a dime look on defense, two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Now a second and 10. Back to throw, it's Levis. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Levis looking to throw. And incomplete on the deep ball. I know we can't do a mind meld and really know exactly what he was thinking, but I didn't see an open receiver there. Maybe, possibly, he did that on purpose and just overthrew him. Yeah, coverage was good, so maybe indeed that was a, another way to throw it away, if you will. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28, Levis. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Here's Levis. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Bobby Wagner, multiple times an All-Pro, in there to drop him for a loss. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd. They feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On now is Ty Zentner to punt. Dances by him. The 39-yard punt, a return of five, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. As I remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia, 
He was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. Geno down a throw. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 10 yards and a Seattle first down. Now Smith. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Gino. Open man. That's Noah Fant, the tight end. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Up the middle, here's Walker. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. Touchdown Seahawks. Tyler Lockett. 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Well, Charles, here in their opening series, they said they had certain plays scripted for certain players. That looked like a well-designed play to get one of their top targets involved. Yeah, let's face it, Brandon. A player of his talent is a problem for any opponent to defend, and we saw it right there. They tried to deny an open lane to him, he still outplayed the coverage and scored the early touchdown. Good luck trying to figure out how to defend him as this game moves on. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. A last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Corral right around the 34. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Now Levis. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Daryl Taylor from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. We had a pretty good idea that they were going to pressure this young quarterback, and that's now two sacks here in the first quarter. And yeah, this is a secret to exactly nobody, because if you're a rookie quarterback, you know you're going to see pressure. Defenses want to see how you're going to handle it, or if it forces you into making bad decisions. That's their goal. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Levis to throw it. 
Going to the right here and finding Burks. So the completion results there in nine yards. And third and eight now. So, Charles, you know, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with. It's going Levis in trouble. Down he goes. And that sack, it goes to Boye Mafe. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Here's Ty Zentner now. Fielded at about the 28. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field ready for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Throwing now is Gino. And this is a quick slant to lock it. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to it. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them. And they run that quick cut on the slant. And oftentimes, they can turn it into big plays. Here comes third in the length of the football. Here's Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. So nothing doing there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. That goes in the category of a play that the defense is going to cherish and excites them. A completion, yes, you give up the pass, but no gain. I mean, that's exactly what you want on defense. And sets up the fourth down. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Tennessee offense set to go again. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. With his size, it often takes more than one guy to get him down, but if you can at least slow him up and the reinforcements arrive, you have a chance to get him on the ground, and that they did that time for a loss. Second down, they go again with Henry. And good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23. So that one will get him halfway to the first down marker. Seven yards makes it third and seven now. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Levis on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A good pick up there, a 22. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually, you're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. Off the play fake, Levis. And it's knocked away and incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not forced that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Henry up the middle. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Let's go, guys. 
Here's third and six. Levis back to throw. And this pass broken up. Uh, the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. It's pretty early in the game, but they've already tried to establish him not just as a runner, but as a receiver as well. Didn't happen there, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them try again shortly. On now is the Titans punter as he's on to kick it away. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. As Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that can put your team in some jeopardy? 14 yards that time for number 14. Walker now on first and 10. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. First down, Seahawks. Now Smith. Metcalf and they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25 another big hitter there this one good for 18 well coaches always talk about finding balance on offense I don't think you can get much more balance than this big time run big time pass a one two combination look pretty good how about that let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch though Smith's throw into the hands of Fan. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Two yards to go, second down. Here's Smith. It's caught, lock it. And Lockett going to pick up a Seahawks first down as he's down inside the 15. And they keep those sticks moving forward that time with a gain of three. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Smith. He'll get that complete to Parkinson. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Ball on the eight. It's second and four. To throw with Smith. Being chased out left. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two as they go to work on a first and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Only a yard that time, second and goal. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. Second and goal from the one. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith to the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
Now we got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that little partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. This Titan defense, they just will not give in easily. Looking for another stop, third and goal. Walker is in. Touchdown, Seattle. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Myers connects on the PAT, and it's now 14 to nothing. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Kenneth Walker finishing things off with a touchdown run. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he returns this to the 22. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. They're staring at a two touchdown deficit, 14-0 the score as they regroup with first and 10. Levis sets up to throw here. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Henry running right. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. From the 43, here's second and a couple. Now back to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Phillips. Two yards, good enough for a first. Inside handoff, Henry. And they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. That felt like a trap, because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Now second and nine. Again, it's Henry. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. He had a minimal gain on first down. Now they stop him for no gain. What do you think, going in a different direction on third down? Could very well be. I'll guarantee he's asking for the ball third time to try and make up for the first two. But his QB might very well say, well, my man, maybe next series. Let's try someone else on this play. This pass deep for Akakwo. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They've had multiple opportunities on offense and still haven't scored any points. Felt like they wanted to loosen things up, throw it downfield, and see if maybe they could get a big play and a quick strike. 
This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Here's Walker to start the drive. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Got it here at the 29 on second and eight. Stick it with Walker on second down. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. Aziz Alshair, former 49er, in on the tackle. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's second and 10. They'll try the air now with Smith. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Complete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here. Third and ten. Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Now to the ground, here's Walker. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second down, a run with Dallas. And he is going to get this close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the Titans' 40-yard line. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. The Seahawks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Back to throw, Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Throwing is Smith. Quick throw here, that's complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Now second and five, snap will come from the six.
straight ahead Walker. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive. And now they face a third and three here. Gino down to throw. And he's got it. Yeah, he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. Myers kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So it was fourth and one down in the red zone, but they elect to take just the three. And I'm a little surprised that that's how they decided to play it, that they didn't go for it there. But sometimes just take those three points and put them in your pocket. I just have one question for you, partner. Okay. Hip pocket or back pocket? Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's, that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. Henry again on second down. And they get him behind the line. So that short gain on first down quickly negated. He lost two there, and it's third down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Titans on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and ten. Levis. And the pressure gets there. He'll go down. It's a sack. And it is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. On now is the Titans punter, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. He'll take it at the 42. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Now it's Smith. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it, and it's second down. And that's the knowledge you gained from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down, and that's a smart move to throw it away. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Now Gino. Left side complete to Lockett. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Now a draw play, it's Walker. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. He's brought down at the 37-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, it's second and eight. Here's a second and eight. Now Smith. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. 
That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Throwing on third down, Smith. That is caught. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. On first down, Smith. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. It's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack. Remember, they had the nice gain on the previous play, but they just gave a lot of it back right there on that sack. Yeah, they get the sack, get back some real estate. Felt like the type of play that could spark a defense and swing some momentum. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. And the Titans are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And with only nine seconds remaining, with not much time, we'll see how they play this. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Let's go, baby. It's game time. The one final shot before the half. Here's Levis. Complete. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports halftime report. It was a strong first half for the former Spartan, Kenneth Walker. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. A very one-sided first half, 17-0 our score as we get going in quarter number three. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. Now Smith and the Seahawks gonna come up first and 10 at their own 26. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Second down, eight to go from the 28. Smith now to throw. A quick target here, complete to Metcalf. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Uh, some concern out there right now as we got an injury stoppage. It's DK Metcalf who's getting some help following that last play. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Now 
Now a first down throw. It's Smith. Over the middle complete. That's Walker. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. He was not the primary target. They expected to get the ball downfield. Instead, checked it down. An old coach of mine used to say to us all the time, when they check it down, that should end the down. In this case, though, he foiled that in a big way and turned it into a big play. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Throwing now is Gino. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Back to throw again. This is the tight end fan. And they move this all the way down to the nine. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. That's another beautiful throw right there. It gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. And his throw is incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Throwing again is Smith. Touchdown! Will Disley, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So another touchdown there, and even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it, pick a play, any play they're rocking and rolling right now extra point up and through by Myers and the lead is now 24 so that drives seven plays in length and it all culminates with a Seattle score After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Henry. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 28, it's second and five. They'll run it again with Henry. Runs through the contact, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. A first down carry for Henry. And fights through one man. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because 
as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. On second down, here's Henry. And he'll pick up about three there, up to the 43. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Levis. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he'll work down inside the 45. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, They've got to pay it off with some points. From the 44-yard line, here's second and six. A shotgun handoff to Henry. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. 85 yards on the ground now for Henry. He's got a first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying a ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. A give to Henry. He's brought down in the red zone at the 18 after a gain of 18. First and 10. Man. These guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Off the option, here's Henry. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Jordan Brooks on the tackle. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. Levis on third down. He finds Hopkins complete, and he'll be brought down shy of the first down marker at the 11. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to make it fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down, and he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's first and goal after they rip off a solid chunk of yardage in the ground game on a risky fourth down call. That was fourth and what we would call long in that situation, wasn't it? That wasn't fourth and inches, was it? No, I mean, you get in those situations, fourth and three, fourth and four, that's that's a lot to, what, what would you say, a lot of pizza left in that box. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> Not everyone dove in on that one. In today's NFL, this is a passing down. All right, this is not a running down. That takes a lot of guts to call that play and even better execution. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Henry will take this into the end zone for a Titans touchdown. And that's a step in the right direction. This had the feeling of one of those turning point kind of drives. If you come up empty there, it could be a long road back. But they persevered and hung around, and they closed the gap here in the third quarter with their first touchdown of the game.
Now Mike Vrabel going to tell the offense to go for two here. Levis will try to throw for the two. And it's incomplete. But a flag is down here, so hang on. Let's see what we've got. Defense. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. They'll look to throw. Here's a diving catch right side. But still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure. But that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready. Because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. As Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. Here's Smith. And he's got Smith and Jigba. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They blitzed there, but to be honest, I don't know if it would have mattered had they blitzed or not. That run play was going nowhere. Yeah, it's really, really difficult at times to figure out where that defense is coming from. But if you're committed to running the football, you can get people up on those linebackers, right? Those guards don't have to block anyone at the line of scrimmage. They get up to the... No, oh, it's out. Smith lost it. It's picked up by the Titans. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. So the coach putting the blitz on, and remember, that coach, former defender in this league, he loves this. Yeah, they love to see it happen because I think they just have that flashback about when they were playing, right? <laughs> that's what we were taught, that's what we did, and they and they use that same impact with their own teams and do the same type of teaching. And we spot. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He finds Smith and Jigba. Give him 19 on the play, but they will still come up a bit short. And now it's fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The Titans getting set and ready to go here for their next drive. And right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got them pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Here's second and seven. A handoff running left, Henry. And a nice 
nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. 124 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Tennessee getting the first down of a big play of 18 yards. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. Henry up the middle. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Running left, it's Henry. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. Levis to throw it. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Now a handoff to Henry. Pushes past him. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. First down, Titans gain of 12. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Levis is that's taken in by a Conquo. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred the defense. An 11 yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense is just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. They keep it with Henry on first down. Shrugs him off. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Now a second and six. Again, it's Henry. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. He wanted that end zone. Powerful running, but he couldn't quite get there. And that's going to really make him upset. And right now, there's no way he's letting a coach take him out of the game. He's going to want the ball again, so he actually does get into the end zone, hopefully on his next carry. And it's a Titans touchdown. Josh Wiley, a five-yard touchdown. And the Titans go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. 
So this back now to a 10-point spread, and you have to imagine they'll line up and go for two. Oh, no question about it. If they can get this to an eight-point game, they can make things awfully interesting here in these last few minutes. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. They'll try and throw for it. It's complete, but he will not get into the end zone. And that one hurts as it will remain a two-score game here in the fourth. A very pivotal two-point try that does not go their way. Now it's a big uphill battle for the rest of the fourth quarter. The attempt was to try and make it a one-score game, right? Touchdown, get two, now you've tied it up. Instead, they don't get it, still down ten. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Ball on the 32, it's second and two. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? Now a pass hauled in downfield, and he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. That one good for 37 yards. I think this defense was still trying to recover from that last play, so you wonder if they were ready for this one. You have to imagine their defensive coaches are yelling at them to get focused because if they don't, more plays like that will result in giving up points. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Geno down a throw. Throw out wide to Walker. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Up the middle, here's Walker. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Kenneth Walker with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it and catch it, and he gets it done. Myers connects on the PAT, and that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. 
Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try to hit the reset button starting tomorrow. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. Second down, here's Levis. They set up the screen for Henry. And a powerful stiff arm, it frees him. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. When you run a screen pass really well, you gotta like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Levis sets up to throw here. Pressure comes, he's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Bobby Wagner picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And boy, possession here turns over with a football already being in the red zone. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now Gino. Oh, he tries to force it in and it's intercepted. still fairly well in hand, but I think now you, you go conservative, don't you? Go into your shell and just run the football? I think you have to, but you also have to tell your backs, make sure you're really protecting the football because you're going to run into a stacked defensive front, which is why they were throwing the football before, trying to make sure they didn't get their backs, you know, really beat up in that situation. Now, good luck to them. Full connects on the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And the pick six we just saw makes things a little more interesting. Still, though, a two-possession game as they control their destiny in this fourth quarter. That's complete to his running back, Dallas. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. the middle they run it's Walker and he'll get it up to the 33 yard line four yards the pick up first down how about that there no frills no additives right nothing crazy just find a way to pick up the first down a nice run right there so they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33 and Walker once more wiggles free yeah, he's going to get a 
solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit four of seven. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try for the first with Walker. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell him to back off of being aggressive, but sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Dallas up the middle. And he's going to be met at about the 43. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Throwing now is Gino. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. And in an afternoon where just about everything's gone right, there's an unlikely sight there. He's got a receiver all alone downfield, and he just overshoots him. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. So Levis and the Titans now down by 10, 2.23 to play. They have all three timeouts and the two-minute warning, but they need two scores. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Levis to throw on first and 10 here. Gets it to Burks. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Levis in trouble. Down he goes. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Levis, he'll look to throw it. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. And this is four down territory here. They know down two scores at this late stage, 10-yard passes aren't going to do it. So they took the shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. 
Desperation time now. Here's Levis. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. But down two scores, I guess they felt like they needed to go for it. They must have thought they had a play to dial up that they could get it, and it didn't work out. Had they must have thought, as you pointed out, they had a play, and they were probably looking at the number of possessions that they thought were left in the game. And down two scores, they must have felt like they couldn't risk not taking a shot here and giving up that chance. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. Down to a knee, here goes Smith, and that should all but do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. 